Again, hope, ha happy Halloween to uh, to everybody. Hope everybody's uh, got the trick or treat plans ready for tonight and uh, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, excited about getting back uh, this week. Uh, big challenge uh, with NC State. This is a a really really good football team. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a you know that's why it's come down to to these two teams. I mean, you know, in November and you got. Uh, Two teams that are well positioned to try to win the division, and so it's exciting to be a part of these type of games. This is this is playoff football. That's what it really comes down to, uh, and uh, so uh, be a big uh, big challenge heading up there. Really impressed with this football team. Uh, the biggest thing that jumps out at you is the the veterans that they have. I mean, they got 21 starters back, and 19 of them are graduates, seniors, or redshirt juniors. And that is uh, very rare uh, in, in college football. So, you know, very, very experienced, well-coached, and, and talented football team. Uh, the two losses that they've had, uh, they just had some critical errors, critical mistakes, and, uh, you know, turnovers and things like that. Uh, but this is uh, a team that's really capable of playing with anybody. Uh, and there's, there's no question. They're physical in the trenches on both sides. Uh, I, I think probably definitely the best D line we've played. Uh, you know, all four of their starters are NFL guys, and they really play about seven or eight guys. Got a lot of depth there. Uh, very active at backer. Uh, you know, forced the issue. Played downhill. Uh, got good experience on the back end, and then offensively up front. Uh, every single one of them hogs is back, and uh, they they really understand their scheme. Uh, do a great job of, of you know creating distortion in your defensive line with their stretch zone scheme. They do a great job of presentation. Uh, you know, very seldom do they just line up and run a play. There's always some type of motion or shift or something going on. And uh, you know, just just a bunch of smart guys that know what they're doing. And when you have a veteran team like that, you kind of get to kind of another level uh, of nuances. Uh, within a system, and that's that's where they are right now uh, offensively. A bunch of good skill, uh, you know, 3, 12, 11, all them receivers, uh, big, strong, can play. Uh, number seven is special. He is electric. Uh, and, uh, you know, Gillespie, the other running back, he's downhill, 25. He came into the game uh, last week and, uh, you know, I thought ran really hard, really tough. Um, and uh, number one is he's one of the best players that has probably come through this conference. Just all around instinctual, versatile uh, football player. I mean, he he does it all. I mean, you don't really know where. I mean, he plays tailback, plays tight end, plays receiver. He's a returner. Uh, he does everything. Uh, number seven's a returner. He took one of the house on us up there a couple years ago. Um, you know, just just really good players. Uh, all around this quarterback, who I think is is an outstanding player. He's done a great job of taking. I think they only got four turnovers all year, but he's he's done a great job of of taking care of the football. Um, he can make all the throws, uh, deep throws to the to the far uh, sideline, uh, you know, to the field from the opposite hash. He's got that throw. He's got the, the does throws a nice uh, deep ball. Uh, they're gonna. They got a million screens. I think they've had 51 screens. Uh, so you got to defeat blocks, uh, and and the ball's going in the air. So it comes down to matchups. Um, and then and then they're very physical in the running game. Uh, got all the RPOs and play actions and boot swaps, all that stuff. Uh, they just do a very good job of keeping you off balance. Got. I think they're averaging 36 runs and passes a game. So very good balance there. And uh, just a just a really good football team all the way around. Uh, so should be a should be a great matchup. Uh, I think we got a good team, and and uh, should be a heck of a game up there in uh, Raleigh uh, Saturday night. Coach, uh, you did so much self evaluation, self scouting after the Syracuse loss, and I know Syracuse also played out of their minds that night. But um, is there is there one or two main areas that you really feel you improved upon uh, in those two weeks off? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we just uh, just just our mindset. That's the biggest thing. It's just our mindset, and uh, you know, making sure we were locked in uh, and had the right mentality uh, going into it. Uh, you know, we were physical, and uh, you know, just kind of got back to some of our uh, core values 
and I uh, thought we did a good job of of uh, playing off some of the tendencies. You know, some tendencies are very good, and uh, but, but playing off of some of those things uh, through the course of the game, we got the ball down the field a little bit more. Uh, didn't hit on some of them, but but uh, yeah, there was a, a lot of things coming out of that game that I thought we did a, a little better job of. You had to take four penalties, but you definitely cut down on those a lot. Yeah, I mean that was. That was, you know, not characteristic of us. Um, you know, we, we were obviously very poor up in Syracuse, 100 and 120 yards or something like that. You're not going to win many games uh, when you when you you have that amount of yards going backwards, you know, over a football field. Uh, that's that's a long day at the office, and that's what it was. Uh, so, yeah, we just we played with more discipline, you know, and and uh, again, I, you know, outside of the, we, the the fumble by uh, ETN, and as many passes as we threw, uh, I mean, we threw it 33 times uh, in that situation. We actually did a pretty good job of taking care of the ball. Who's one underrated player from NC State that maybe hasn't got the line white, hasn't got the attention, but can really make an impact this season? Underrated player? Uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're, I don't really see many of them underrated in my eyes. They're all really good. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think they're receivers. Are very good players. I think that number eleven uh, doesn't have as many catches as maybe twelve and, and three, uh, but he's he's a third down guy, man. I mean, he's been a very very critical third down player for them. Um, so you know maybe him offensively, and then uh, over on the defensive side, you know all those guys up front and and every, all the front four, the first four get get a lot of the talk, but. But they got a lot of depth up there. They got a lot of those guys that can play. Um, and uh, but you know, I think that number 58 for him. I mean, he's a he's a very active uh, football player. And um, you know, but I, I don't I don't know if he's underrated or not. I think they're I just think they're a really really good team all the way around, top to bottom. Given how much they move around, Samuel, how hard is it for a defense to sort of get a beat? It's hard. I mean, you know, because you just they they. They're just very creative with him. I mean, he, he's the guy. I mean, he's not, they're not coming out of the game without him touching the ball. So, you know, it, when they just, when you just line a guy up at one spot and that's where he is, uh, much easier. But, you know, they're going to, if they have to put him at tailback, they're going to make sure you can't stop him from touching it when they put him at tailback. And then they're going to line him up and they're going to motion him all over the place. So there's, you're not going to, you're not going to take his touches away. Uh, but you've got to do a great job of knowing where he is and understanding what they, how they've used him and what they like to do with him from different formations. So it's just a lot of preparation, a lot of study um, to, to get ready to, to defend him. Because, uh, I mean, they use him every which way you can think of, in the play action game, the, the swap boots. Uh, you know, he'll line him up as an off tight end, and it's, here comes the, you know, they've been running the stretch, and now here comes the stretch boot, and he's in the flat on you. And, and it's just getting the ball in his hands. And, you know, he's great in space. I mean, he, he breaks tackles. He's strong. Uh, he's 220-something pound guy. And, and, again, he's got excellent ball skills. Uh, great, great. He does a great job with the ball in his hands after the catch. So uh, they'll screen it to him, hand it to him. They'll throw it down the field to him. Uh, you know, so you're not going to – they're going to make sure he has his opportunity. So you just try to make sure you got a good plan, understand what you're doing, and execute your plan. Coach, you've certainly been in this position before in big games and moments where if you lose, you're out of the driver's seat to win the division. What's the key, really, especially with this team, where some of these guys haven't been in this spot before to handle this moment, go out and execute? Yeah, just same thing that it is every week for us. Just you know, prepare with purpose. I mean, it, when you do that, you have attention to details. Uh, bring the effort, but make sure you've got good technique to go with it. So that goes that speaks to your alignment, uh, your positioning, your eyes, uh, your footwork. I mean, it's and then it's just your commitment, you know, to the task at hand. Uh, that's what it comes down to. You know, you can't get outworked. Uh, you know, the other team wants it just as bad as you, so. You know, championship football uh, comes down to to execution and the little things. Uh, both teams have played eight games, so it's not like you're going to line up and just trick each other. You know, you are who you are. Uh, so who can do what they do better? And uh, it's just that simple. I mean, going to be one team go go represent this division in the championship game, and uh, you know, there's going to be it's down to two teams. 
Uh, and that's what it's all about, man. You, you love these opportunities. That's what November's about. You know, you hope to be in this situation. So you just embrace it, you get ready, and you go play. Coach, piggybacking off of that statement, uh, the next game mentality that this team carries and you that you have as a mantra, you know, this week there has to be a little bit of a window closed on that with the, the fact that this is a, a playoff game for you as taking the division. Um, is that creeping into anyone's head at all? It's the biggest game of the year. I mean, it is. Uh, it's just it's really no different. I mean, it's the biggest game of the year. And if we hadn't won last week, then this game wouldn't be as big. Um, I mean, but, you know, I mean, it just kind of ramps up as you go through November, you know, from an outside standpoint. But from a team, you got 12 opportunities. And at the end of the day, every year, we just want to be the best we can be. And, you know, right now we can still be 11-1. and one. Uh, So you got to win eight, you know, and that's all we're trying to do. And, yeah, we all understand the – the picture of, okay, if you, if you lose the game, you, you're most likely not going to win the division. Uh, but uh, I guess they'd have to lose their last three. That's probably not going to happen. Uh, so just take care of your business, and you don't have to worry about all that. But, um, you know, you, you, you want to win the championship every single year, and you want to stay in the hunt as long as you can. Uh, so we're going to do everything we can to try to win the game and, and keep pushing forward. But... Uh, it's not the season's not going to be over regardless. Uh, you know, if, if if we're not good enough to win it, you tip your hat, you shake the hand, you move on to the next one, and uh, you, you you go on to your your next goals. And uh, and again, trying to be the best you can be, whatever particular season. If you're good enough to win it, you're still in it. And uh, but it's not over. You know, you got to keep playing. So we don't really sit around worrying about oh what if. We just focus on just having a great. Tuesday practice and uh, just put our best foot forward. If you do that, then you can live whatever results you get as a competitor. The way that the, the game went down here between these two teams last year uh, is a pretty easy to illustrate to these guys the different an inch here and an inch there makes uh, in this game between a win and a loss. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they definitely understand that, uh, not just because of that game. I mean, our guys understand that you know, you, you've got to play well uh, and you've got to earn it, and especially when you're playing good teams. You know, teams that, that are pretty evenly matched. Uh, you know, you don't, you're not, especially, you're not going to go on the road and, and, and beat NC State if, uh, if you don't play well. It's just that simple. You don't go to Louisville and win that game if you don't play well. You don't go to Virginia Tech and win that game if you don't play well. Uh, you know, I mean, you got to, you got to, you got to show up and you got to do the things to, that it takes to earn the win. And uh, it's not any different this week, regardless of what happened last year. I mean, last year was a was a tough, hard fought game. We were fortunate, came out on top, and uh, but that didn't have anything to do with this year. Coaching games like this, up, though, do you ever find yourself trying to manage emotions from certain guys? You ever see in practice that maybe a guy's a little too jacked up for the moment? And you have to kind of reel them in when you know you see the stakes rising a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe some of the young guys. You know, I mean, I think as a coach, you're always teaching and you're always starting over in that aspect from a mindset standpoint with your team because your team changes every year. You know, if you if every year you had the same team back, you know, you don't deal with some of those things. Um, but uh, that's where your leadership of your team uh, comes into play. And, and again, uh, if, you, if you do a good job of creating week in and week out that <laughs> how critical this game is and how important it is and playing to a standard and pride in your performance, then it's just the next game. You know, I mean, and, and so you don't get distracted by all of that. Um, and so that's what we try to work on around here so that we don't have a lot of that where, oh, we're playing this team. we got to really practice well. Uh, we, we just, I mean, we really try to practice well every week. And, and that's what we've probably done as good a job as anything around here. That's why we've been so consistent. Uh, so, but you're always kind of protecting that that mentality, if you will, um, especially with your young guys. Coach, do you have an update on Mark Fields uh, if he'll play this week and how he injured his foot? Yeah, he just got just got hurt uh, in the uh, whatever the last game he played. Uh, just, uh, Syracuse, yeah, just kind of hurt his arch in his foot and uh, just the, the arch part of your foot. And just had a hard, hard time planting and cutting and doing what he needs to do. But, 
you know, he's pushing through, and, and hopefully he'll be back this week. But uh, we don't have any decision on that yet. Pre game, he came out no cast. Comes out the game has cast on his hand. What happened there? Uh, he somehow uh, hit something in his hand, uh, broke something in his hand there. I don't know, some kind of bone, uh, and uh, they put a cast on it. And uh, I, I thought it happened. Uh, I thought it happened. I don't think it happened in the pregame. I think it happened like er, er, early in the game is when it happened. Because because Dan, yeah, it didn't happen. In, we had one kid get hurt in the pregame, but not Tanner. His happened early in the game. A uh, helmet or something uh, hit it, and uh, you know, Danny Poole came to me and said, "Hey, I got to take Tanner in. We got his hands hurt, and we're going to X-ray it." And he came back shortly and said, "He's got a little broken bone in there, but we can cast it up, and he wants to come back and play." I said, "Okay." Next thing I know, he's out there with a big old club on his hand, uh, padded up. You know, uh, cast isn't very big, but the 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 padding is enormous. Uh, so came back and played. Yeah, it was just early in the, it was early in the game, like real early. It was sometime in the first quarter. How is Marcus Edmonds? He's still coming. He's not still not quite ready, uh, but he's practicing. I think it was last week uh, was the first time we put him in green and really cut him loose to do the one on ones and all that. Uh, but he's he's it's just I mean, heart breaks for him because uh, he just wants to play so bad and he's ready to get out there. But you know you got to be able to. He knows what he can do, and you got to be able to, you know. Uh, play to a high level, you know, and I mean, that position is your feet is everything, you know, change of direction, lateral movement, uh, you know, weight transfer, and he's still not quite there. Um, like I said, you know, I mean, almost been better off to have broken a bone uh, in, in his foot. Um, but to those sometimes uh, uh, the type of midfoot sprain he's had or just can, can linger and take time uh, to, to heal up. But he's He's uh, he's getting better, and at some point I, I think he'll be back. Um, but uh, he's still still not quite there. Coach, you lost some great pass catchers last year in Williams, Scott, and Leggett. Um, but it seems like you have so many more options this season. Kelly's doing a great job distributing the ball. You had 12 different guys catch a pass on Saturday. Uh, how much is the luxury uh, is that uh, for defenses not to be able to key on just one or two guys? Well, it's, it's huge. It's kind of what we talked about earlier. When you, if you just kind of got one guy and, and, and he's not a dynamic guy, as far as, you know, uh, you know Mike Williams, you weren't going to line him up in the backfield and hand it to him. Uh, you know, you might put him in the slot and stuff like that, but there's only so much you can do with a guy like that. Uh, I mean, you can put him to the field, but he's pretty much going to be some type of receiver position. Um, and, uh, you know, if you got one guy, they can, they can scheme him up a little bit. But... Uh, we've always prided ourselves on having multiple playmakers and, and distributing the ball. Um, and, you know, that's no different. I just think we've got, you know, great depth. Uh, we, we've got very good depth, and, and we've got some good young players that are going to be superstars uh, at some point. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just it's a good position to be in right now to have the guys that we've got. Along those same lines, you have a lot more competitive depth at running back. Last season against NC State, Wayne Gallman left the game early with a concussion, uh, but now you've, you've got more options there as well. Yeah, we do. You know, Feaster uh, is a sophomore, and, and I, I mean, he's done a lot of good things. He got a little hit pointer the other night, I limited him a little bit, but he's 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 doing good. Uh, and then Travis is is you know just get just learning every week, and uh, I think going to be a, a very special player and. Uh, you know, Fuller and, and 26, uh, Choice, uh, really gave us some good sparks the other night. Uh, gave us some good, tough, hard runs. Uh, gave us that good veteran, uh, you know, leadership that we needed, especially when, when Feaster got uh, hit on that hip. Uh, and uh, we limited him the uh, latter part of the game. I mean, I thought those two guys went in there and did a great job of taking care of the ball and getting some tough yards for us.